Simon and from SimonWoods.com. Uh, Portuguese uh, read today, Esperau uh, Alentejo Reserva 2014. Uh, I'm not sure of the precise blend, but they uh, for this they use, uh, I think Alicante Boucher is one of the main grapes. They use some Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, I think they use some Aragones, also known as Tempranillo. And I think they've got some Trincadera in there. So I think it's those four grapes that, uh, that are the, the main event. So let's give it a whirl. There's a herby wildness here. Uh, it's strange, I, I look at the colour here. Alicante Boucher is grown in many parts of southern France in particular. Uh, and, and, and traditionally it's been grown to, because um, it's, it's one of those grapes that actually got red flesh. Most grapes have pale flesh. But um, it, it's been used to add uh, power and, uh, and colour to uh, more to, to paler skinned grape varieties. But the weird thing is in parts of Portugal, and especially the Alentejo, it, it does it makes really nice wine and it, it seems to be work well with the uh, with the with the local terroir and pick up these herby characters and um, so it smells like it's it's going to be a gentle giant it's there's a a whiff of vanilla there and um, but it's it's vanilla which I wouldn't be surprised at it being as much from characteristics in the grapes as from uh, from oak barrel what they've done really nicely. Uh, because these grapes have got heaps of colour, Cabernet Sauvignon is not shy in colour, uh, and well, none of, none of the four is, is particularly shy in colour, but they've not gone to try and make the biggest, beefiest wine possible. They've, they've gone to make a wine which, uh, even, despite the 14.5% yeah, 14 alcohol, uh, does feel like a wine that you can actually drink rather than just have to sort of go, oh, 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 undo my stays, Mr Darcy. It's got these rich, rounded, bold flavours, but it's never... They don't feel to have gone over the top. Things are ripe, but not too ripe. There is a bite of tannin there, um, and there's a touch of oak, uh, adding a little bit of firmness to the wine, uh, but not so toasty, high charred oak that uh, is dominating. It feels like a wine which is still very much curled up and needs to needs to come out of its shell. Uh, but uh, as it is, uh, I I like it. There's a, uh, a little edge of um, what I call desiccation, damson skin that's uh, slightly dried too much, as if maybe some of the grapes had slightly shriveled. But what's good about it is that dis if maybe the, the grapes did shrivel, they've not then punched them and punched them down and extracted uh, uh, slightly bitter raw tannins in the process. So good, and I think that um, much as I like it now, I'm going to like it even more in about five years' time, uh, or five hours' time, if I were to pour this out and uh, have it this evening. What time are we now? Uh, five o'clock. It's probably ten, a bit late to be uh, having this in large quantities at ten o'clock, but uh, maybe I'll pour a glass out now and uh, uh, sup some with my sausages later. So, uh, but uh, pretty decent wine, and uh, I look forward to that with some sausages. That sounds rather appealing. That's what we'll have for tea. See you soon.